In today's video, we'll be going over the various applications of parametric equations. Well, problem number one says that at noon, a runner starts one mile north of her house, and at 1 p.m., she is at a point that is five miles east and four miles north of her house. A asks, how far has she run in our first hour? Well, from noon to 1 p.m. is one hour, so we're trying to find how far she went from the one mile north of her house to the next point at five miles east and four miles north of her house. Well, I like to start off this question by drawing a diagram. So we can say that this orange box is our house, and we can label H. Then we can use red. And then we know that she is one mile north. So we're going to say that this line segment is A, which is one mile north, right? So she's currently here at noon. So I'm going to write a nice little 12 right next to it. She's here at, her f at zero hour, okay? Well, then we know that at 1 p.m., she's found to be 5 miles east and 4 miles north. So let's go ahead and write that out. Well, let's use a little lighter of a blue. So 4 miles, or 5 miles east, so 5 miles east. So let's go 5 miles east. So let's say that is 5 miles. This is going to be segment B. 5 miles east and 4 miles north. So here's our house, and she's 4 miles north of that point. Well, so let's just say this is 4 miles. And this is also segment B. Well, now we know that she is currently here at zero hours. So this is going to be hour zero. And this is going to be hour one. Well, what we need to find is how far she traveled from right here to about right here. Well, what we're going to do is use Pythagorean theorem. So we can make this a nice little triangle. And we know that this is the five east and she was found four north. If we know that this part right here is one, so she's already right here, but she was found four miles north. That means she traveled another three miles north in that one hour. So from this segment to this segment, she traveled three miles. So now we know that this segment is three, and we know that this bottom segment is still five. And now we need to find our hypotenuse, which is the total distance that she traveled in her first hour. Well, what we need to do is Pythagorean Theorem. And hopefully all of you remember Pythagorean Theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So what we're going to do is use 5 as a. So we have 5 squared plus b squared. b is 3, as we said, plus 3 squared equals c squared. And c squared is our hypotenuse, or c is our hypotenuse. So then we have 5 squared, which is 25. 3 squared, which is 9, equals c squared. 25 plus 9 is 34. The square root of 34 equals c. Well, now that we know the length, we know that in her first hour, first hour, she traveled a distance of the square root of 34 miles. So now what we're going to do is we know that she traveled the square root of 34 miles in her first hour. And we know that we cannot simplify the square root of 34. Well, that means our answer is she traveled the square root of 34 miles in first hour, and we're going to leave it in radical form because that's the most accurate. Let's say your answer for another type of problem was the square root of 44. What you could have done is done two square roots of 11, because we know that two squared is four, and four times 11 equals 44. So you always want to use the simplest radical you can in your final answer, and we are going to leave it in radical form, as I said before, because it is the most accurate. Well, now let's go to a 1b. It says that if she continues at the space, where will she be in relation to her house at 2 p.m.? Well, now we know that she traveled an additional hour. When I was working through this problem, I actually skipped it and went to problem C, because in problem C it says write a function that will give the runner's position at any given time. Well, we know her position at time 0, which is at noon, and we also know her position at 1 p.m., which is T1, or our first hour. So what we're going to do is make a chart in order to write our functions. Well, our chart is going to consist of three different variables, which are t, x, and y. So t is basically representing our time. So we know that we have our times of zero hour and hour one, and we need to find hour two for part b. But let's finish up zero and one first. Well, we know at zero, we have we need to find our x and y. Well, x will represent our horizontal axis, which is east and west. So whenever we see east and west, we know automatically that that's going to be dealing with our x value. So we have east, I'm going to write e and w. And then y, it goes up and down. Well, we know up is north, and then down is south. 
So whenever we see y, we know that it is n or s, north or south. Well, now what we need to do is find those values. We're, we're going to go back to 1a and see where she was at 0. Well, we know from our problem, it states that at 0 or at noon, she was only one mile north. It doesn't give us any information if she was east or west, so we're going to assume she was just exactly one mile north of her house. So we know our x value is going to be 0 because we have no east or west, so that's 0. But we do know that she's one mile north, so y is 1. Well, then at 1 hour, which is at 1 p.m., because noon is 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. is 1 hour. And the problem also tells us that at 1 p.m., she's 5 miles east and 4 miles north of her house. So 5 miles east, that is our x direction. So we have our x equals 5. But then we know that at y, or north or south, she's 4 miles north. So we're not going to be adding 1, because remember, we are just 4 miles north. So our position is exactly at 4. So we have a y value of 4. Well, now what we need to do is get the equation. Well, in order to get the equation, there's several ways to do it. And one way I like to do it is where we have x equals y, or x equals a1 plus w times t. Well, what we have to do here is a1 is going to be our first point in our x. This is the x equation. So then we have 0 plus w, which we don't know, it's the variable, which we're going to solve for later on in this problem, w times t equals x. But you can see that our next point, 5 comma 4, which we have right here, can be used to help solve for w and complete our x equation. So what we're going to do, we're going to substitute that in. So what all we need to do is deal with our x, because this is an x equation. So we know x is 5, so in 5 equals 0, a1 is going to stay the same, plus w and we're going to look at the t at this value of 5, which is right here. So our t value at 5 is 1. So now we just need to isolate w. Well, w times 1 is w plus 0. It doesn't really matter. 5 equals w. So now we know our equation. So we're now going to substitute this guy back into the equation where we didn't know w originally. So now we know x equals 0 plus 5. Oh, ran out of space. So now we know x equals 0 plus 5t. That is our x equation. But now we need to find the y equation because it's going to be a parametric function. Well, for a y equation, it's the same exact thing, but we're going to deal with our y value. So we have y equals a1 plus w times t. You can make it a b. You can make it another variable if it helps you remember that one is for x and one is for y. But at the end, it's going to be the same thing. But so now we have y equals our a1 for y is 1. 1 plus our w times t. Well, our w value is unknown, so we have w times t. We're going to do the same thing where we go to our next y value, which is 4 equals 1 plus w, and our t at 4 is 1, w times 1. Subtract 1 from both sides, 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 equals w. So now we know that. We're going to substitute this back into our original equation, which was y equals 1 plus 3 times t, and that is our y equation. So we know our x equation was 0 plus 5t, and our y equation is 1 plus 3t. So our answers are the ones that I'm about to highlight. Let's make it a nicer color. So we know this is one of our answers, and this is another one of our answers for problem c. Now coming to number 1b, we are going to use the equations we just found in part c, and we're going to apply them to b. Well, in part c, we found that x equals 0 plus 5t, and then at y, we have y equals 1 plus 3t. Well, we know that we need to find out where she is in relation to her house at 2 p.m. Well, that's why we wrote this extra row at 2, because that's our second hour that she has traveled. Well, at 2, we're going to find our x and y value, and that's easy since we already found our equations. So we're going to substitute 2 into our x equation and then our y equation. So let's just write it up here. So we know x equals 0 plus 5t, and y equals 1 plus 3t. 1 plus 3t, and t equals 2 because it's the second hour, and t represents time. So now let's do that up here. Well, t equals 2, so we have x equals 0 plus 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is just 10. 0 is nothing. x equals 10. Then we have y equals 1 plus 3t. y equals 1 plus, and we substitute 2 for t, times 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 equals 7. y equals 7. 
So we can write that down here. Y equals 7. Alrighty. Well, now we know X is east and west. What I do personally is I consider... What I do is I consider west to be negative and east to be positive. Well, now what we can do is we can say, hey, we have both positive numbers. So we know that X is east and west. So we know that we are 10 east of the house of her house. And then we need to see that we have a positive Y. And remember, Y is north and south, north and south. I consider north as positive and south as negative. We have a positive number. So we know that she is 7 north of her house. And that is how you complete problem one for this video. The rest of the video will be coming in part two, which will be uploading soon. Thank you. I hope this video helped. If you believe it did, please consider to like and subscribe. Also, our Instagram is in the description below. You'll get all the new updates for our new videos. Thank you.